this for the reel. And we got kind of halfway through. We got to the, we did the single bowed uh, bowing pattern with the accent there. And we were going to go on to the long bow pattern tonight, right? We were going to get the uh, Irish style with the big up bows. So I think we should keep going with that for sure. I can't remember. Oh, it was made behind the bar was the tune. Yeah, we were... And you sent us the first two uh, lines um, with the pattern, but the last two not yet. Okay, yeah. So you'll see how it works out. Hopefully you can kind of fit it in there on your own so that you mm -hmm. don't, we don't have to write it. And I can, I can certainly write it anyway or whatever. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we'll work with that tonight and see, see where we get with that stuff, eh? Anybody having any problems with the bowing pattern this week? Did it elude you? Could you like not do it? Or did you throw your fiddle out the window or anything like that? Not yet. That's good. <laughs> I actually had another class before this and I played it for my teacher. Uh, my other fiddle teacher and she was like... Oh, what did she think? Uh, she like, she said, oh, that's a classic. Everybody knows that one. <laughs> good. That's good. That's, I try to make sure we get all the classic ones so that you can wander around and get the tunes. You know what I mean? Be able to play the tunes. It's a good good thing to do. Oh, yeah, Sue Leader. Yeah, I did I did send out the whole thing, didn't I? Oh, you're, you're still, I think, I can't are, hear are you, Sue. Are you recording? Yeah, okay. Yeah. What do you call this bowing? That's the longbow style. Okay, so that... That um, that square thing that is that the down bow? Yes. The... Oh, good, because that's what I was doing. Okay. okay, good. Yes, a staple. I should have explained this, but a staple is a down bow, and a, yeah. v, for, a v for victory is the up bow. And for okay. for like decades, I had no idea why that those signs were there. Do you know? Do you have you guys ever heard of why they use the staple for down bow and the V for victory for the up bow? It's because the bottom of the bow is the staples, the, is the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the down bow, because it's shape, square shaped. See that? And the tip of the bow is V-shaped, and so that's the up bow. Isn't that wild? I never, ever do that in my life. Uh, but anyway, yeah, staple is down, V for victory is up. Okay? So, yeah, so I sent out the fully bowed uh, made behind the bar. Did you not get it, Melanie? Let me see and just make sure. Let's see here. Made behind the bar. Let's see here. With the Boeings and accents, yeah. Okay, let's see who I sent this to. Yeah, I sent it to everybody. Did you get it, Melanie? I can't hear you, you're muted. <laughs> I'll have to go back and look. I, I got the one with um, the first two lines of where you're putting that. Okay, at. I'll just forward this to you right now so you don't have to look. Okay. <laughs> I hate looking. Okay, there you go. You got it now. So that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. The longbow style, fully written out, it looks like that. Do you see how those slurs go over the bar line? See that? That's kind of one of the defining characteristics of this bowing pattern, is that over the bar line bowing. And it has a great sound to it. Like, I'll just play it for you, just to get everybody kind of into the idea. I'll play you a bit of the main behind the bar with the long bow. without even trying that hard because if you do the bowing that way it just happens for you okay 
So that's the longbow style. That's what it looks like and that's how it sounds when you put it into a tune. So for now, let's go back to our regular uh, single bowing pattern. And I suggest we'll do it on the G major scale there, the little scale pattern that we were doing. First of all, let's just play a G major scale. Get it nice and tight and bang on the money and under our belts here. I'm just going to get my tuner out so I don't, so you guys can believe me. <laughs> okay, so we'll start with a nice bang on G major scale. Okay, just a regular one. Ready, go. shall we? I'm sure that was brilliant. Ready? Arpeggio. So that was G major. Everybody feeling okay about G major? No problems. It all feels good and comfy. So now let's try that scale pattern. Let's try that little uh, uh, backbeat pattern with the single bowing. How you doing, Susan? Good. So we're going to do this. Okay. And let's do it nice and easy at first just to give you a chance to get your arm around it. And then we'll try it a little faster. Okay. So, ready, two, three, and... sign and nobody looked like they were having too much trouble with the pattern how's the pattern sounding everybody able to do it without having to fight it too much yeah great now the only thing I would say to complain and you know how much I hate to complain and I never do but if I were to complain I might say that at first I saw great big down bows <laughs> And by the end, it looked like this. See, that's just all the same. And that's the danger, of course. It slackens off and you backslide a little bit and it doesn't come out quite as pronounced as it could, okay? So I find you have to kind of two thirds of the way through it or halfway through it, you gotta do it overboard. You know, you gotta exaggerate it. Yes, Susan? When you're coming back down, where is the downbeat? So it starts on G. And that's the, where the back beat. It's actually the back beat, right? So it's on the E. Does that make sense? Yeah, very good question. 
Okay, so we're gonna exaggerate it to make sure it doesn't kind of uh, just even out on you. Okay, let's give it another go. Okay, I'm not. Well, we, we won't try faster. We'll just try to get that really nice and exaggerated. A one, two, three, and. for sure. How did everybody do? Not bad? Not bad? Okay, let's do it one more time just like that. Now did you notice how I'm starting to kind of really pull my bow on those accents so you're hearing a more percussive note, eh? You hear that percuss nice percussive note? I'm hitting it just like a drum there. Well, that wasn't as good. You hear that? Just like a, hitting a bell or whatever. And that's what you're going for. Let's do it again. Same speed. A one, two, three, and... <laughs> seems to be on the way down when something happens. What what do you think is going on there? I'm just not following the pattern. <laughs> okay. I, I, I lose it. So. Mm, I wonder where. I, I can't catch up because of the speed. So. Mm -hmm. Now the best thing to do in that case when, when you do lose it and you want to jump back in the skipping rope is no, don't bother trying to catch up. Just prepare for the next one type of thing. You know what I mean? Like see where I'm at and then like okay I think the next one's gonna start on the one so you just get that ready and when it comes along you try to do it you know okay yeah now I'm interested on the, the way down wonder what it is oh I know I bet you I know any money what it is but a lot of people tend to skip the open strings on the way down you might be skipping an open string okay keep your eye out for that anybody else having trouble getting through it Yeah, can you just play that that way down again? Because when you do it slow, I can do it with you. 
But when you do it fast, it's like after the G, the first one, then the second one, I seem to miss it. Okay, let's see. I will do that on the way down. doing something totally different. I'm just messing with your head. <laughs> well, I just, can I just, can I, because I'm not yeah. sure. It's, um, I'm just going to play the notes. I'm Go gonna ahead. Yep, yeah, okay. that's it. Now make sure you start that on a down though, because you just started it on an up. Yeah, but you do too. No. Well, I, I, you could do the first two notes, but it's two oh. notes. Does that help? Jeez, I put. I should have pointed that out. That's a, I sometimes slur those pickup notes. I don't mean to, you know. What were you gonna ask, Sue Leader? Um, so I was gonna say the same thing. Is at first I was forgetting that it's the two up bows, and I was getting really screwed around, but I. Can we just play starting at the top and going down a couple of times? Let's do it. Absolutely. Yes. All right. So I'm slurring the first two notes. And I think it kind of helps to get the bow going, okay? Let's, let's give it a go. One, two, three, and... Excellent, excellent. It's, it's oh. def definitely the open things I'm missing. <sighs> Damn yeah. open strings. I, I see it so many times, skipping the open strings. It only seems to be on the way down, scales or exercises, for some reason. And I always find it funny because it's the easy ones that you don't even have to think about. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. You never know. Anyway, shall we try the whole thing again? Yeah, let's do it whole thing right from one end to the other. Maybe just a little tiny bit of heat on it. Okay, just a tiny bit of heat. All right, here we go. One, two, three, and...
deal with that. Not too bad, not too bad, that's good. Now, let's see about this long bow business here, okay? So here, it's good. we're gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna change the bowing. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do everything in the up bow except two and four, okay? Here's what it looks like. I'm gonna show you in the first couple of patterns. So we'll do the same exact pattern with the fingers, but we're gonna go up, up, down. Up, 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 down. just go very very methodically note for note up up down up 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 down okay so we're gonna start with the G and the A are in the up down we go for the B now we're gonna start the up bow in the open down we go now the one down we go now the two down we go, now the three. Down we go, now the open. Down we go, up we go. Down, up. Down, up. Down, up. Down, up. say that didn't look very very terrible at all that looked pretty good does everybody understand this concept of joining up these up bows okay let's do it again just like that I'll call it out just like that again one two three and up down up Does it help when I say it or is it just starting to get annoying? 
It does help? Okay. So let's do now, let's take a little breather, a little stretch of the arm or whatever, and we're going to try going all the way up and all the way down and maybe pick up the tempo a tiny, tiny bit. Okay? Is there any questions about any of it? How does it feel on the arm? It, it might feel a little weird at first, but it'll become very f familiar to the arm. How's everybody feeling with that? Yes, Sue? When you said two and four, I, I, what are we? What were you talking about? The two and four. One and two and oh, three yeah. and four. Got, yeah. got it. Yeah, beat two and four. I think it really helps doing that the long bow after doing the um, the single bows, Dan, because you, you kind of know. Like, I mean, doing the single bows, you kind of know where the you should be anyway. Yes, it really, really oh, helps. Oh. That's why I get people to do it that way. Single bow first. And then remember, our eventual goal is a combo of both. And that's what I do. 90% of my fiddling is a combo for, well, for reels anyway, is a combo of uh, long bow and single bow. So, uh, like, and, and the way you can practice it is just to alternate them. <laughs> You go back and forth between one and the other, and now you're practicing what I do 90% of the time. See that? Okay. But for now, let's just stick to the longbow one more time, and we'll go right up and down. Any other questions or comments or anything like that about doing it before we try it again? All right, let's heave in then. All right. one end to the other. A one, two, three, and up. Down. Up. Down. Oh. Hold on, I gotta mute somebody. Okay, there we go. All right, we're gonna start again. One, two, three, up. Down. Up. Down. Up. set all those bowings while I was playing. I'm getting really, really good at that. Okay, so how we doing, everybody? Able to get through it? Not too many rough patches or not too bad? Diana's shaking her head a little bit, but just keep at it, Diana. I'm sure you'll be able to get it. I saw a lot of them were working there. I was watching your bow and a lot of them were working. And I noticed when you were first doing it, this is very common. She was splitting them up. For some people, that really helps because what now I'm always an advocate of never stopping your bow, of course. You know, I always talk about the Newfoundlanders that tape the throttles on their skidoos completely open with duct tape all the time. That's the way I play the fiddle, right? I, I am full throttle all the time. But with some people, that helps split up the bow with those notes because you know, you guys know the danger of slurring, right? is that you bunch all the notes together at the beginning of the slur and it screws with the rhythm. So sometimes the little lulls to make sure you split up your bow in three separate notes is a really good idea at first. Just remember that eventually you want to smoothen it all out. Okay? Shall we try a little bit faster? Now, I don't think that I can keep saying the bowings while we go faster. I think it's just going to come out 
with some, I don't know, like some prehistoric grunting and stuff like that that I'd be embarrassed about if I watched the recording. So let's just see if we can do it. And uh, then if we have problems, we'll go back to yelling it out, okay? So a little faster meaning this. Just do it again right away. Same speed. Oh, one, two, three, go. comments or discouragements to describe or anything like that it helps when a blue jay doesn't hit my window when I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god geez yeah. i remember i used to where we lived in cape breton there was like a little twisty road that brought you to the highway you know and, and me and my brothers we all kind of competed how fast did you do today oh i did under 10 minutes on the road, you know, everybody was like always blasting. And one time I was going so fast, I don't even know how fast I was going. And I whipped through to the highway and I was like, woohoo, you know. And I got, I went to a drive through, Tim Hortons drive through, and the girl goes, You know, there's a bird sticking out of the grill of your car, eh? <laughs> and I said, Does he look like this? <laughs> and I went out, sure enough, there was a blue, it was a blue jay too, sh sticking out of the front. It was not very nice. At least, at least it wasn't a moose or a deer. <laughs> oh yeah, well, some of my brothers did. We had a lot of deer in Cape Breton, and some of my brothers and my sister did lose cars to a deer. I, I was only lucky; I never ever hit a deer. But when we were moving out away from Newfoundland, driving to our gentry to get the boat, middle of the night, I was driving a 22-year-old car with one headlight and no shocks. We're driving along, Jennifer's asleep next to me, and all I saw to this day was the moose's legs. That's all I saw. And I whipped her over here and I whipped her back on the road and we avoided that moose. But I swear to God, I still never saw the top part of that moose, just his legs. That's how big they are. Anyway, I've distracted you enough. Let's do it again, faster. Okay, and then I'm going to see if anybody wants to play it for me, okay? Just to see about, make sure it's there and give somebody a huge boost of confidence once you're, once you're done. So let's give it a go, a little faster. One, two, three, and... <laughs>
One, two, three, yeah! <laughs> Pretty good. Anybody have to bail? You had to bail, Sue? Just a fast one. Just a little bit fast, but that's okay. It's that's all... okay. Yeah, it's just a just a little pusher. That means yeah, that means you're that yeah, and and practicing at the kind of a little bit slower tempo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So, who wants to give it a go for me? Oh, come on. I always have to do all the playing. Who wants to give it a go for me so I can hear it? All right, Susan. Hooray. I, I can only do it forward. I can't do it backwards. Okay. <laughs> It's okay. Now that is really good. Really, really good. So you did that perfect, completely right with the bowing. Now, did you notice that you had more trouble when it was time to go back over to that lower string? Yeah. yeah. yeah I missed can, a note there. And I can tell you why. It's only because you're picking up your whole arm to do that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even that is not enough to get you over there because it's just okay. way too much effort. All you got to do is this. Okay. And you like okay. you look like you're doing more like this, and so yep. by the time you get it over there, it's already gone, and you've moved on. Okay. See what I mean? So maybe the doorway, just a little bit of of trying to keep that elbow down is is really going to okay. take care of that problem. Okay. Now with Perfect. the way down, it's it's up, up, down, up, 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 down. Try a tiny bit of that for me, just so I can make sure you got a handle on it. Okay, hold on, wait, 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 wait. I can see the problem that you're having. It's, you're doing three in the up on the way down uh, at the beginning, but it's only two. Only so, two. Yeah. That's okay. So you had another little kind of elbow problem on yep. the way down there, and not the good kind. <laughs> um, and uh, but otherwise, you see how that works now. It's great, very good, excellent job there, Susan. Anybody else want to give it a go for me? What about the young hot shots? Do you want to show me how slick you got her? What about you, Pearl? I can tell your child. You, I can tell that you actually want to do it. You're just being shy. Uh, I don't have too much of a grasp on it, but I can, um, I'm better going down, actually. Oh, interesting. Yeah, now that is... You got the basic concept. The The thing that's kind of getting in your way a little bit there is the string changing again, you know? It's just kind of, you just kind of, you have to remember it. I think that's the main thing is you got to remember it. Uh, but you're getting a really nice sound out of that fiddle. And when you're doing those big down bows, it is having the effect that I'm kind of, that I'm trying to get going, which is the kind of nice strong note. So that's really good, okay? We'll just keep practicing it and it'll fill in all those little, few little gaps. I don't think there are anything that's going to really get in your way.
Yeah, I'm better at doing it with a piece. Like the maid behind the bar, I practiced a lot of it with this. Well, that's what we're going to do next. Yeah, now we're going to do maid behind the bar. <laughs> Anybody else want to play it for me or have any questions or comments about doing the exercise? We won't try to alternate this week. We'll try to alternate next week, okay? And you can try it in the meantime on your own. That means each group of four is either going to be long bowed or single bowed, okay? And I did a video. The video is on the YouTube there if you want to get it properly off of there. It's funny, my brother. I was talking to my brother Sean this week. I called all of my brothers and sisters this week, each one. Went right down the list and talked to everybody because I realized it was two Mother's Days since my mom died and I hadn't actually talked to absolutely everybody, you know? So I just went right down the list. I had a great day. I did two days. It took me two days to get through everybody. And I was talking to my brother, Sean. And Sean's a great fiddler and a good teacher. And, you know, they're, they're, the, in Nova Scotia, they were just undergoing a lockdown again and it's pretty severe. And so, and it's kind of new to them because they had a great summer being able to do whatever. And so I'm talking to Sean and he's like, yeah, I had to switch over to teaching online. And, you know, I only have a few students, but I can't have them come over right now. So I'm trying to do it on the Zoom. And I'm like, oh man, I do a lot of that. And he says, uh, yeah, I just I have a lot of trouble. Like when we're trying to play together, like as the lag is awful. I mean, I just do it anyway, but geez, the lag is just terrible. And I said, don't you know about the mute button? And he's like, what? <laughs> So we're going to get together on the Zoom this weekend. I'm going to fill him in on all the stuff I've learned over this past year and a half using the Zoom so that he can actually use it successfully. But, geez, can you imagine trying to play along with somebody a little bit ahead? Like, But if anybody could do it, it was Sean because his ears are just very stalwart. He just will keep going. That's the good thing about Sean. He'll just plonk down, and it doesn't matter what's going on. He'll just steady keep going. So if anybody could do it, it would be him. <laughs> anyway, okay. So that's the scale pattern. Has everybody got a handle on that? They can practice it. Even if it's slow, they can still get the bowing right. Okay. So now, made behind the bar. So I sent you the music with the bowing written in. It follows exactly the same pattern that we just did on the scale. Okay. Up, up, down. And then after that, up, 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 down pretty well right through the whole damn scale it's going to be like that okay so why don't we just go very very slow with the first part there and see if we can do that okay so up up down Oops, sorry up 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 down check in. I gotta say that the bows were looking pretty good there. So I love those zoom moments when I can watch everybody's bow go in the same direction. That was really good. Now it didn't last for the whole time, but I would say it lasted for a good two-thirds of that whole thing was correct. All right? And that's the way it is. You lose it here. You get it back there. You just keep jumping back into the skipping rope. Okay? Let's do it again. Up, up, down. Up, 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 down. Ready, and...
say that looked terrific everybody's bow was going the same direction doing everything right the whole time and it looks steady and that's the other thing about longbow you want to make sure the amount of bow you use is consistent right through the whole thing otherwise you end up working your way off the bow in one way in one direction or another okay Kevin Burke used to say that the longbow st style depends on a quick clean down bow to get you right down to the end of your bow with no weird commotion, you know, scrapes or squawks or crunches or anything, to get right down to the end of the bow every time so that you don't work your way off the bow. That's most of the time people start doing long, long bow and this is what happens. <laughs> And then you're you're at a bow that's it see that so you got to get that right down there now if you're having trouble with that and you find it hard to swiftly get down to the end of the, your bow without a big problem then you can practice it by doing this you do a big long up and then a sharp down like that see that and you try to make it as clean as you can with no bounce or crunch or anything like that nice and smooth and light I like to do it lightly See that? Nice belty. Sit down bow. Get right to the end of the bow. And resist the urge to take the bow off. We never get a chance to take it off. Very seldom. So keep the bow on and do that. Nice percussive down. Yes. So Dan, you're not you're not putting any more pressure then on the down bow. You know, no. And and for now it depends on the hand, of course. But for my hand. The speed of the bow is plenty to dig into the string as much as I need to. If I add more, it's probably going to crunch. Okay, probably the same for you guys. Okay, thanks, Mel. Have a good concert. <laughs> uh, probably the same for you guys, but you'll have to discover it on your own. You know, just to see if you can judge how much you need. You might need a little. You might not need any. It's totally going to be up to you. Okay. So now let's try that again. And see if we can keep that in mind with the down bow, and then we're going to do the second part. All right, here we go. Ready?
looking good, everybody. You're hanging in there real good. Now, second part. Hard part with string crossing. Hard because it's high. <laughs> Okay, so just a couple of challenges, but let's give it a go. Second part. I got something in my eye. Ugh. Okay. One, two, three, and. Quite as good? It's hard without the cheat sheet. <laughs> yes. Well, that's why I made the cheat sheet. It should kind of get it in there, whether it wants to get in there or not. Maybe we'll go a little slower, okay? It is a little more challenging. There's a long note, and there's some string crossing and high playing, which is always intimidating on the bow arm. That's the thing, eh, about playing high. Your bow arm is a better tuner than your tuner. And if you're not quite up there, your bow arm doesn't want to move. It's just like, no, I'm not putting out that flat B. No way, you know? And so you either have to force it or get up in tune. That's, and if you're not quite in tune on the high end, you're probably flat. So I suggest pressing a little harder. Yes, Sue? Are you playing something different at the beginning there? Like that's a... I got to look. F... A, A, B, but I think you're playing something different. I'm just going to look because uh, I don't know. I uh, need... Okay, let's see. Is it going in? Why did it go sideways? Da, 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 be. Oh, I am. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, okay. I'll stick to this version. I was. I was playing a little scaly version instead of the two A's. So I'll stick to this version. Sorry about that. A little confusing. Okay, let's go slow. A little slower. Give you a chance to do that. Okay, sorry about that. One, two, three, and... Okay, now it seems like we're having a better success right now. 
How's everybody feeling at this point? You getting a little bit better at it? Great. All right. Any questions, comments, concerns, queries, or complaints before we try the whole thing? Oh, you're a brave bunch. Let's do it. From the top. Read behind the bar with the long bow style. One, two, three, and... to get over but otherwise hanging in there pretty good anybody have any problems couldn't get through it kept hanging up somewhere it didn't appear that way but I just like to check in and give you the opportunity to say no it's not working if it's not working how's everybody doing it's working okay all right well you know what that means let's do it again a little bit faster <laughs> hey I got my new chair thousand dollar chair and I gotta say it is really awesome like it's totally silent see that no more crunching which is great and it has all these controls it's like really definitely uh, well worth the money except that Jennifer says that she can't play the tuba in it because it comes up on the sides like this and it's she can't do the proper spread to put the tuba uh, between her her knees so so that's kind of a drag but anyway it's all right I'll just keep playing fiddle in it. Okay, let's do a little tiny bit faster, just a bit. It might even help, you never know. Ready, two, three, and.
Alrighty. How did everybody hang in there for that? <laughs> That's kind of the go. That's the way it usually goes there. You get it here, you get it there, you know? That, so that's totally normal, totally normal. So what I would suggest is a little bit back from that. So I don't have my metronome with me, but so just for the recording, when you go and refer back to the recording, this is where we were doing it, whatever that is, okay? And so you wanna go just a little bit south of that, just a little bit slower than that so that you don't have to stop. That's the main thing. Okay, you do it at a tempo where you can pull it off and you'll have more practice at being able to get it. Now, I don't know about you guys or whoever had good success there, but I was entering a groove about the third time through, my bow started to take on a groove and my right foot started to come down nice and strong along with it there, opposite it, I should say, to make a nice groove. Did anybody start to experience that a little bit as they were going? You did, Pearl? Yeah, I got a groove, but mostly threw me off was the transitions, because I always have trouble with them, so I always need to practice them extra. So I would transition, and then I have to wait, and I'm like, oh, I know where we are, and then start again, but then I immediately get into the groove. Oh, that's so good. Like, now, the <laughs> transitions you're talking about, very commonplace to have trouble with the bowing. And so my advice to people always is this. So for, for practicing the seams, that's what they call it, eh? practicing the seams. <laughs> And what you want to do is, first of all, you want a good start for the B part, all right? So if you're practicing going from A to B, practice starting the B part. For instance, what is the first note? <laughs> Just to be sure, because that's one thing that can kind of make your arm stop is not quite sure what the first note is. You know what I mean? Guessing a little tiny bit. So that's the first thing you want to do. Start it two or three times. Just the first two or three bars of the B part. Over and over, just starting it strong. Then back up, do the bar before, and go into that strong beginning of the B part. See what I mean? Work out whatever bowing it is in the pickup note. That's most of the time the problem. Now in this tune, da 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 be da, right? That's a long note. Da 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 be da, da 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 da. See how I would do that? There's my three note slur there. See that? That's where I pick it up. And that's why I was talking about the last time the surprise up. Okay? Because it starts before the downbeat. You get that up bow going before the downbeat, you should be good to go. You think that'll help, Pearl? Okay. And you do the same thing. Okay, good. And you do the same thing going back into the tune again. You know, you work out that strong beginning and the pickup notes, do the seam a couple times, and it should give you no more problems. All right? Any um, other comments? Yes. Ian, do you mind just uh, um, the transition between the A and the B part? Yeah, so... Uh, uh, <laughs> See how I do that? Um, no, be, sorry, between um, when, when you finish the A part and then go into the B part. So when you go up to the high. To oh, the sorry. B. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. So it's the upper D there, eh? Let me just make sure what they got in the music. But. Yeah. Now, you see, I've scratched it in very rudely and rudimentarily there. But there's a D-E pickup I use to get into the B part. It's exactly the same as the lower. It's just up an octave. <laughs> See that? So it's still a D and an E. It's just up the octave. And that's how I get into it. So I'll play that again just so that you know. So... there okay I'm just a, a bit confused with the with the with the the bowing there so mm -hmm. so it's so I'm the just, D the high D yeah 
is going to be on a down. It's going to be on a down. It's a down book. And then the up starts on the E. Okay. 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 Yeah. No problem. No problem. Okay. Does that help? I think that's going to help everybody actually. <laughs> and then if you look, if you look at how I, uh, I did exactly the same thing of the ending of the B part. Okay. So you do the high D and the high E to get back into the B part, the low D and the low E to get back into the A part. Okay. Very good question. Shall we try it again, guys, with all those things in? Any other comments or questions or anything at all? Anything at all? Yes, Susan. Oh, you're muted. When I start to go fast, the first note after the, the, um, the down, my bow wants to slur that, and it's I hard know. to break it. I know. That's... That's probably the biggest kind of impulse that is so hard to try to control, but I just try to control it. It's the best thing. If you force the issue, it won't take long for it to get under your arm, but it is a forcing for a lot of people at first. Okay. Okay, guys, let's get our helmets on and do it again. success rate do you think good that is great so we'll leave that for now guys that's enough longbow torture for the, for this evening for sure and like I said next time we'll do the alternating this is what it's going to look like with me behind the bar and I will write it out for you <laughs>
works there, right? And like I said, you know, I'm not strict about any of this stuff. I go back and forth kind of willy-nilly, and that's what was happening there. I was trying to strictly alternate that whole tune, and I find it kind of hard because I just do all kinds of stuff, you know? So anyway, but it'll be very, very good practice, and that's what we'll do with that next time. Is there any other questions about the backbeat pattern with single bow, with long bow, made behind the bar with the long bow, anything at all that you want to ask before we kind of leave that for now? Anything. No? That's great. Excellent. Okay. Now why don't we, uh, why don't we kind of uh, go back to a little bit easier and play some jigs. So let's work on our jig set. So what are we doing there? We're doing the Cliffs of Moher and the, uh, and the Mug of Brown Ale. Am I right? Yeah. Great tunes there. So why don't we practice them? We'll do them a couple of times. First, not too fast, and then a little faster. I'm just going to run off to the bathroom quick so you can kind of get those tunes out, get them warmed up a little bit, and I'll be right back. Just while I was in the bathroom, I thought of something. I had a great idea, uh, like I'm remembering, and uh, we haven't done any hornpipes. And I think it might be a really good idea to get a couple of hornpipes because the swing that we're trying to get into a reel is kind of related to the way that we do a hornpipe. And it's a slower version, a slower way to do it. It's a little bit more accessible. So I think maybe next time, uh, we'll do that alternating long bow and regular single bow thing. We'll touch on that, do that, but we'll also learn a hornpipe. I got a couple of great ones in mind. I did them with the Celtic Orchestra. The first one is called Galway to Dublin Town, and it sounds a little bit like the Star of the County Down. Great old tune. And then the next one is called Cronin's Hornpipe. It's a really, really awesome tune in the key of G. So we'll do either one of those, all right? And I'll get it out on YouTube and send it to you guys in the meantime. But I think that might be a great way to get the swing under your arm in combination with this bowing pattern stuff. Anyway, jigs. <clears throat> play this on Sunday. I'm going to have another streaming session on Sunday night. This coming Sunday night, 7.30. Uh, and uh, I'll play these tunes, these two tunes. Okay, so let's go not too fast. Let's go kind of like Is that going to work? You think we can handle that tempo? One, two, three, and...
we feeling there about the jigs? Anybody having any problems? No? No problems. Wow, cool. So I wouldn't mind going a bit quicker unless there's uh, something that might cause somebody to not be able to go quicker, but I can't really see why we can't do that. So we'll just shake her out a little bit and we'll try it again. Ah. All right, great jigs. Whatever we should put with it. Then I got to get another one to put at the end of that. What key would be good to go into? G. How about cash jig? Who plays cash jig in this group of people? Yes, you do, Bev. Sue, how about you? Do you play the cash jig? I think I've played it once or twice, but you know, I need to, you know, look at it again. <laughs> sure. What about Susan Blazer? Have you played cash? I'm sure we've done cash together. We could always do it again, let me tell you. <laughs> For sure. And what about Pearl? Have you ever learned the cash? I've never learned it, but I've heard it a few times. I thought my friend danced to it. <laughs> I think you'll uh, you'll probably learn it in, I would say, five to seven minutes. It's very, very simple tune. How about you, Calida? I definitely have made you do the cash. Definitely, without a doubt. I think we've done it, like multiple times yeah. multiple times that's great okay cool so you might want to look at that you know next time we'll tack that on to the end i think it'd be a cool change so uh so uh wouldn't that be nice that'd be a great change so we'll stick that on the end so we'll resurrect the old cash actually why don't we just do it right now Let's resurrect the old cash, okay? So let me send you a good version. I, I do have a good version already from my beginner class. Cash. Oh, look at that. Jig set. Oh. <laughs> so this is, um, so what I'm sending you is both, actually, you guys might as well get this too. This is great. So uh, in my beginner class, we're doing a couple of tunes. We're doing the cash, and we're doing it with uh, a Cape Breton tune called John Allen's Jig. It's a really cool tune. Okay, I'm just going to get this out to everybody here. Okay. Yeah. Diana, Simone. Okay, Kesh and John Allen's. Okay, I've sent it off, and one of my students in my beginner class uh, very enterprisingly wrote in all the fingerings. <laughs> So uh, if you're wondering what finger to use, it'll be quite, uh, quite apparent there on, on that version. But anyway, and John Allen's jig is a great tune too. Let me play it for you while you're just looking at it there. Very common tuning. Everybody plays this in Cape Breton. <laughs> Suzuki beginners in Oakville uh, years and years ago and there was like 13 of them and I remember the day of the performance they were all running around going <laughs> over and over and over my god I felt bad for teaching it to them but anyway there you go so we might do that one after too it's a great old tune you'll get it in a few minutes it's very simple but let's take a look at the cash and see if we can get the cash back from the dead okay so I'll play it for you, get it back in your head.
let's go real, real nice and easy and see if we can just play it. Okay, it's the key of G, and uh, it starts on the G with a great big long note. So let's go really slow and see if we can play through this tune. Ready to cash. <laughs> there guys they call her poor old cash because everybody's you know everybody's played it at some point or another poor thing so how's it feeling to coming back that's good any bits or pieces that you need to work out before we try it faster no you hear a couple of rolls I'm putting in there eh? classic spots for rolls there where I'm doing them in this tune and y'all people also do it at the very start see that we're gonna have an attempt at that too so why don't we go a little faster now see if you can add your rolls if you can if not it's no big deal and just play a long note and let's see how we do with the cash ready and
did we do? Too much fiddling for you, Sioux leader? <laughs> I wore you out. So how are we feeling with the cash? Did that work? That was a stately pace, but you know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't slow. So that's kind of cool. So we're getting it up there. That's very good. Now, why don't we have a go at the whole thing to finish off the evening. We will play all three jigs and we'll play them about that speed. Okay. See if you can get that nice jig rhythm that we worked so hard on there a couple of weeks ago. See if we can get that a little bit of that in there. Do you notice how the Kesh jig really lends itself to that jig rhythm, eh? You notice about that? Some nice long notes to give you a break and lots of stretches of eighth notes. So very good one to practice it. I'm kind of checking out here, Dan. So I'm going to enjoy your fiddle playing, you guys. Okay. That sounds good there, Sue. No problem at all. Okay. okay. Let's do it. Let's start at the top. Flip some more. Twice each, everybody. A one, two, three, and.
you guys worked very, very hard this evening. Thank you very much for doing all that bowing. And uh, it was good practice. And so next, so keep looking at the cache so we can get that whole set up to where it should be. And think for next time we're going to do some horn pipes. Okay? So just get that kind of around in your head. And I think it'll be really fun. Any comments, questions, queries, concerns, or complaints before we go? No, thanks, Dan. Have yeah. a good weekend, buddy. Have All right. Fun. Yes, have a great weekend, and hopefully see you on Sunday, 7.30 on the Facebook page or on the Zoom. I'll send a link to everybody. It would be great to have a few tunes. All right? Okay. Thanks a million. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.